Welcome to Microsoft Dynamics NAV Coffee Mug Tutorials. I'm Johannes Gudmundsson, founder of Enecta, a Microsoft Gold certified partner. Using a coffee mug as an example, I'll show you how to create items, purchase orders, sales orders, manage inventory, and much more. So go ahead and grab your own cup of joe and let's get started. Hello and welcome to the Coffee Mug Tutorials. Um, today what I wanted to go through was, is cash flow. Um, we here at Coffee Mug International are very concerned about cash flow as is uh, as are most businesses and uh, cash flow has always been sort of a, a problematic area because you can get some of the detail for cash flow or cash flow forecast um, out of the system for AR and AP and um, bank etc but like there are manual entries that don't ref are not reflected on the GL that affect cash flow and uh, we would like to see those manual entries uh, in the system uh, normally we've just solved this with Excel uh, but obviously as we know Excel is great for many things but once it becomes uh, something that you go in every day and update it should belong in the ERP. Now NAV has come out with a great module, it's actually a couple of years old, uh, called Cashflow, and we're gonna go a little bit through that today. Now I am logged in here as the accounting manager, this is the accounting manager role, and inside the accounting manager role there is a cash flow chart, as you can see right here. And this chart is telling me uh, a few things, for example over here I see that my receivables for January 2017 uh, we operate in the future so um, it's a very revolutionary business <laughs> everything happens 2017 so here we have receivables um, of 953,000 uh, we got some manual revenue which is is going to be influx of money from uh, investors for 300,000 the expenditures are the payables that we have outstanding, and those are due in January for 500000 And some manual expenses, meaning that we actually have to pay out to investors 220000 And then we got our purchase orders that have not been converted into AP, but they are ex expected to be converted, obviously, because they're placed, uh, for 535000 So my net is close to zero here in January. We're playing a very close game. However, in um, February, we see that the receivables uh, is less and the payables are way less. And then there are some manual expenses and manual revenue and our cash is going up. Um, it happens to be uh, early in January. So we actually got uh, a notification that we are gonna be getting an extension of the credit line. And I want to reflect that in here so I can push this line up. Uh, and how does this all work? Well, if I go into cash flow, or type in cash flow right here, I can get into chat of cash flow accounts. And I've actually set up a cash flow account. So these are not chat of accounts, these are separate cash flow accounts. And they are not touching the GL. There's data that comes from the GL into this, but um, this is not necessarily reflecting the GL exactly. Now, how does thing, how do things come into here? If I go into my cash flow setup, I can see that I tie together um, the receivables account, this is all the customer ledger, to receivables here. Uh, payables to payables, etc. So I can tie together service, sales orders, purchase orders, um, etc. So that whenever I actually post into those ledgers, um, it will be updated here through a certain process. And okay, that's great so far. So how does how do we actually change these numbers? If I go into my cash flow worksheet, 
I have a separate worksheet to interact with these numbers. If I hit suggest worksheet lines, it will take any change in AR and suggest to update that in here. But right now I'm actually not uh, getting the AR in here or AP or anything like that. I'm putting in a manual entry. This entry has nothing to do with my GL at the moment or bank. I just want cash flow um, to reflect that we are going to get a credit line in the future. So it's going to be 011517. Document is going to be credit line 01. My forecast, I have one forecast. The source type is going to be it's a cash flow manual revenue. And the source is, uh, we can call this in this case, private investment, actually financial asset. Uh, and the account number I wanted to hit is going to be, let me see, oops. Uh, we're going to get, in this case, I'm just going to hit miscellaneous receipts because I don't have anything for a credit line increase. And uh, we are going to get um, 300,000. All right. Now, when I actually register this, I post into my cash flow. I'm only posting into my cash flow. I'm not posting it to bank, not posting it to GL. I'm only affecting the cash flow. Uh, now, if I refresh this, I can see that miscellaneous receipt is now 300,000. And if I take a look at my home screen again, now you can see that the line is not close to zero anymore. It starts at 300,000 and goes up. So we're looking good. Another really good aspect is the um, I go to cash flow forecasts and there is a great screen here called cash flow availability by periods. If I open this up, it shows me how I'm doing. Now these are net for each month, which is kind of nice to see whether each month is going to be a positive or a negative. We're looking great here with all positives, but technically, or most of the time, we want to see the balance. So I can just change that here. And now I see my cash flow balance at date. So for the time that I have cash flow forecast in, I can see my cash increasing, going up to 100,000 in December, January, it goes up to 400,000. And you can see here, it's all that, odd that they call it cash flow manual expense, it should be manual revenue. Uh, that might just be a typo on Microsoft part. But if I click in here, I can see my miscellaneous receipt for 300,000. Okay, so how does this, uh, how does AR and AP get added into this? If I go back to my worksheet, um, cash flow, like so, uh, if I suggest lines, and I want to see, for example, just uh, receivables. I want to get the receivables in. It suggests the receivables that I have. And they come in here by invoice, as you can see. Uh, I can go over this now and say, well, okay, this is great. I might be able to post this to, um, to my cash flow, but uh, wait a minute. If I go into this 170,000 here, uh, from John Haddock Insurance, I don't think they're going to pay me on the 9th. I think they're going to be a month late, so I can change this. I'm going to move that into February. It's, let's say, February 1st. Um, so here I am actually changing the date that the cash flow is affected, even though the invoice due date stays the same. So if I register all of this, now it's successfully registered. If I go in and look at my availability by periods, uh, this is great. Go into February, let me see, and I have the cash flow forecast 
2000, oh, that's 16. I want to go into February 17. I'll go here. And now I can see that that was actually posted on this date um, and updated. So that even though this invoice uh, was due in January, I moved it to February because that's when I expected to get paid. Um, so all in all, this is a fantastic um, module to forecast cash flow and uh, it you can interact with it both by getting data from uh, the GL or from the ledgers and then doing manual things. Um, so kudos to Microsoft for solving this problem. Thank you. <laughs>